universal on non-discriminatory love and kindness is often closely associated with the Buddhism. As the principle of a Buddhist teaching <coughs> monastery or <coughs> Global Peace University, Global Peace College in Mandalay, I spread with this message of Meta among my hundreds of students, both in monk and novices. I work with other spiritual leaders from Christianity, Muslim, and Hindu communities to promote intercommunal peace. To my deepest dismay, I'm, in the, I'm in learning that when the conflict between the Buddhist and Muslim in my country tend to embrace extremism, hatred, and racial prejudice, we stop being the conflict between the of between and Buddhist and Muslim. <clears throat> How can a people who call ourselves Buddhist, Buddhist be so incredibly discriminatory expressed by all these Jews and other hateful words towards others who do not Subscribe to our Buddhist view. In my view, as a Dhamma lecturer or teacher, there cannot be in my Buddhist country. There cannot be my Buddhist race. For Buddhism treats self as mere illusion not a tangible and trusting reality. How can such a religion be used to justify hate speech and this of a hatred towards other communities of faith? I'm incredibly sorry the astro cities have been communicated in Myanmar in the name of the Buddhism. As a son of the Lord Buddha, I pledge to do everything in my capacity as a spiritual leader to promote peace and harmony among all sincere beings, especially those who are in conflict state and Rakhine state. I know that <clears throat> two of my fellow Buddhist monks here with me today join me in offering our heartfelt pledge to con continuously to promote peace, life, and tranquility. I invite you all help in our committed community artificial. May you all be free of nationalist extremism. May you be peaceful in mind and body. Thank you. Our next speaker is Dokinla, a former middle school teacher from Rakhine State, Myanmar. Ladies and gentlemen, Reverend James Seattle and distinguished guests, thank you very much for giving me an opportunity to make an urgent appeal on behalf of fellow Rohingya people back 
home in Burma and despair. I am Dr. Hela, a Rohingya woman born in Arkan State of Burma in 1953. Until I left Burma, I worked as a government middle school teacher. I was born in native of Arkan soil. Just like my ancestor who lived from cradle to grave, has the indigenous people of our land. Now, sandwiched between present day Burma and present day Bangladesh. Today, I would like to appeal to you to help restore our nationality, full citizenship, and basic rights in the country of our forefathers and mothers. First, how were we in the past? How are we today? And how did we get here as a people with district identity who are being punished if we, we say we are Rohingya? Do people not have the right to identify as so and so ethnic community? Following our country's independence from Britain, 1948. We, the Rohingya, did not need to apply for citizenship. We, we were considered officially as a full citizens of the newly independent Burma. We were officially recognized as a distinct ethnic group living along across the nation, national borders and indigenous to own our, our own ancestral land just like any other indigenous ethnic groups you find along Burma along and porous borders with India, China, Thailand, and Laos. When the first post-independence government of Prime Minister Unu took office in 1948, my grandfather, a self-identified Rohingya, applied for the union of Burma citizenship. He thought, he needed to ask power now rest with the new government. The relevant line ministry replied to him, writing that he didn't need to apply as he belonged an indigenous ethnic group of the multi-ethnic union of Burma. In the early 1950s, when the Burmese government introduced National Registration Card, Rohingya Soya issued this legal identification cuts nations of the country. We had absolutely no problem to obtain legal IDs. The government of Burma, including the military leaders, both in the region and in the central administration in Rangoon, treated us respect and appreciation as the one of the ethnic people of the new Burma. We enjoyed basic citizenship rights and official recognition as a distinct ethnic community well into the early 1970s. We were broadcasting in our own mother tongue, Rohingya. On Burma Broadcasting Service, the only radio station three times a week starting in 1961. When I was a young student, we Rohingyas are full access to schooling. We enjoyed full freedom movement. We could move one neighborhood to another, from one village to another, from one town to another, and one state to another within Burma. There was not even idea, let alone a national policy, of severely restricting our marriage, childbirth, or family size. But all this bad change when General Niwi, well known for his violent streak as a person xenophobia, today Christian, Muslim, European, Indian, Chinese, and so on, we consider anyone who look different, believe in different God, or talk different, completely untrustworthy. Indeed, anyone deemed untrustworthy is precise has a threat to nationality. So in a little over decade since we 
he became military dictator. The military government of uh, General Newey launched many violent operations against us, the Rohingya. The first large-scale campaign to drag us out of our own ancestral land began in February 1978 under the Discuss of immigration check, widely known as Nagami or King Dagon operation. What was initially essentially a counter insurgency campaign aimed at anyone who was not Buddhist and promised from a strategic border region was launched because we the Rohingya have a single dramatic geographic pocket as opposed to being spread out and spread across, we were singled out for persecution since. One of the major general Niue government with a push anti-Rohingya Rakhine nationalists was passage of 1982 Citizenship Act. The Citizenship Act stripped us our nationality status and erase our ethnic identity. As the racially motivated law came into the effect in the fall of 1982, hundreds of thousands of Rohingya who had held national registration IDs were issued temporary registration card, white card, so-called, and confiscated, confiscated them, rendering Red Rohingya people absolutely without any semblance or uh, proof of their legal standing as a Burmese citizen and lawful resident in our own country. To today, nearly one million of my fellow Rohingya people have absolutely no, no legal assistance as a people. Thousands of my own fellow Rohingyas live in ghetto-like conditions where armed guards stand ready to shoot and uh, abuse. And yet, the government of Tenzin tell the people that the Rohingyas are kept in this neighborhood and camps for their own protection. Over the last nearly 40 years, the level of restriction, repression, abuse, and depopulation has progressively increased. When the end Foreign NGOs and Rasasha describe Rohingya neighborhood as West Oban prison and refer to them 21st century concentration camps. Burmese central government has imposed measures to regulate, control, and restrict every single step of life for the Rohingya as human community, freedom of movement, choice of marriage, access to schooling and health Continue. health cleaning, place of worship, opportunity to grow food or hold employment, and even rights to identity. Ourselves as a Rohingya ethnic people, everything we do has to be approved in writing by the authorities. The approval is obtained only by bribing local authorities. Indeed, the Burmese regime and his, its official had learned to turn our operation into the uh, profitable business. We have been subject to chronic waves of violence, both the anti uh, Rohingya Rakhine nationalists and any by the state security troops, such as police, border guards force, and regular army and navy. Our people live in contest and profound fear of not knowing where the next meal would come from, when the next wave of mass violence await, or whether we will die or we will live on our own ancestral soils. The Rohingya says feeling out, uh, fleeing out of fear of death and destruction at the hands of local Rakhine nationalists and central Burma's troops. They are fleeing conditions of life on the land, their birth. 
that they know are men designed to destroy their life, their community, their children, and fleeing extremist, systematic, and decades-long repression and policies designed to erase our identity, our physical and legal existence in our own ancestral land. Some of you will recall that, like African dictator Adi Amin of Uganda, General Newi military took thousands of Rohingya, uh, thousands of Chinese and Indian out of the out of Burma in his 26 year in, years in power. This is the same Newi regime that has introduced long-term policy to destroy our Rohingya community. On our own ancestral land, the present government of ex General Tenzin is simply continuing the Burmese military policy of Rohingya, Rohingya destruction. In fact, President Tenzin and his government deny persistently that we Rohingyas are part of Burma. In the face of irrefutable and official evidence of our ethnic identity. He reportedly and officially proposed to the UN to expel, resettle more than one million of our Rohingya people in three countries, or build UN finds apartheid in our own land. I was very much saddened to hear that. This is General Tenzing was nominated and even shortlisted for the Nobel Peace Prize in 2013. I thank Norwegian Nobel Committee for wisely choosing not to confer him the supreme honor and recognition which definitely don't and doesn't deserve. In the last three years, UN and estimate, UN has estimated that 100, uh, 150,000 Rohingyas, including mothers in newborn babies, have fled country under the pre President Tenzing's watch. Since 1978, Spanish military government have terrorized our community so much so that today almost half of the total populations of Rohingya had been forced to settle across the world, including here, Norway. No one wants to leave home, especially the home and the land where they, uh, they were both. But when the Rohingyas do taking their infants and elderly relatives, they are fleeing for their lives. On behalf of my fellow Rohingyas, we are standing in dangerous high seas with no food and water, dying slowing in vast ghettos with no adequate water, food, or medicine. I appeal to you today to stand with us in our darkest hours of needs. Norway is considered as around the world a special country, small and influential promoter of peace and reconciliation around the world. I would like to direct my appeal to the Norwegian people and the, go the government that has you engaged with my country of birth diplomatically, commercially, and politically. Please put the suffering of our people on your policy priorities. I know that now we consider Myanmar or Burma one of the focus countries important to Norway. And Norway is involved in supporting peace process in Burma. I appeal to the Norwegian public and le leaders that we too deserve a life in peace, a life where we are allowed to call ourselves by the name we choose, a life where our newborn are not denied nutrition or legality. Lastly, I appeal to the world, fellow Rohingyas, to lend us a hand of compassion so that our people no longer suffer cradle to grave. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. May God bless you all. Well, thank you so much.
truly appreciate uh, your words and wisdom. I also wonder, what is the peace process? In Myanmar, Burma, everyone with their gun is sitting on a table on a peace process. And Rohingyas, who have given up guns and peacefully asking just to be a citizen, are not on that peace table. Do you like that peace table? It needs to improve somewhat, I guess. At this moment, please uh, join me in welcoming the former Prime Minister of Norway, Honorable Shalmange Banuwe. Dear human rights advocates, ladies and gentlemen, for decades, the Muslim Rohingya population in Myanmar and Bangladesh have been victims of severe repression. There is no doubt that the government in Myanmar is failing to protect the Muslim minority living in Rakhine State and elsewhere. Only this year, 25,000 have fled the country, many by boat, often on an extremely dangerous voyage, which we see the results of today. Another 140,000 are living in severe and dire conditions in internal refugee camps. It is really timely to increase the focus on this tragic situation and to strengthen our efforts to help and to solve the problems. The dates for this conference were fixed before the last sad development. But the current situation makes this conference even more relevant. What we have witnessed is in the Mediterranean Sea and still do here in Europe is remarkably similar to what is happening in Southeast Asia right now. But I would also like to add an important difference. The, the refugees from Africa are fleeing to Europe, hoping for a better future, and nothing wrong with that, of course. But the Rohingyas are fleeing from Myanmar, running away from a living nightmare that has lasted since the state citizenship law of 1982 that practically made the minority a stateless group of people. The last week's exposure of the mass exodus of Rohingya boat refugees from Rakhine the Southeast Asian countries' refusal to help for a long time, and mass graves in southern Thailand with Rohingya trafficking victims have highlighted yet another time the desperate situation of this stateless Muslim minority group in Myanmar. Unfortunately, the situation has not improved 